Hello there. Hey there. Greetings. I'm Aaron, and this is Camp Peculiar, a channel for visual storytellers who are interested in using AI art to support their web comics, their animated stories, and even making collectible vinyl figures. I think it's almost impossible to think of a Funko Pop that the Everett Washington-based collectible figure company Funko hasn't made, so today I thought it would be fun to team up with Mid Journeys AI, maybe Stable Diffusion if you want, and my prompts, and we're gonna make a brand new Funko Pop, and then we'll design the box, put it all together on a virtual toy shelf, put it into After Effects, we can spin it around, look at it, and maybe tell a story with it. This video comes with a free resource. That's right, I made a Funko Pop box template that's all layered, it's wonderful. It should make this process super easy. We're gonna get to that in a second right now. It's time to make a pop. You got you got to think of what you want. What are you into? I'm into uh, like 1950s fast food diner in space kind of stuff. Like I'm a, I'm a fan of the old Space Quest Sierra Adventure series. So that's what I'm going for. Something like that. You can do this in Mid Journey or Stable Diffusion. I'll show you both. But here's some things to keep aware of when you are making that prompt. Unlike the comic book or illustrative style that I usually go for on this channel, today we're looking for photorealism. So here's the prompt that I went with in Mid Journey. You can try out something like this. I did a little lead in phrase and that phrase was Funko Pop figure of, and then this is where you'll put your actual prompt. I put in a sci-fi 1950s drive-in diner employee. You can put in whatever type of pop you're looking to create. Then a comma on the end of that, and then we get into the styling information. I went with vinyl material, octane render, photorealistic, hyperrealism, render man, and solid color background to try to remove any sort of like blurring or stuff that Mid Journey might put behind that. And that's really the thing here is that one, you get the full body, two, it doesn't put it on some ginormous pedestal, and three, that it doesn't use depth of field to blur out certain parts of your model. After you find something you like, you're gonna hit V to get some variants of that. When you find a variant that you like, you're gonna to need to upscale it to the largest resolution that you can and probably hit that remastered button. The remaster button is gonna fix a lot of issues with the feet and the hands. Not all of them, but it's gonna fix most of them. You can also use the Stable Diffusion web interface for this or the excellent plugin by Christian Cantrell. I went with a prompt like Photorealistic plus Renderman plus CG plus a single Funko Pop Got back ones that look like this, the the vinyl rendering uh, and the hands and the feet on Stable Diffusion uh, came out much better right out of the gate than in Mid Journey, but that could just be me, the, the prompt engineer here. Once you have your pop image from your AI engine of choice, it's time to bring it into Photoshop and get it on its own layer. So I've got two that I like here. I got uh, what I call a uh, baby, baby chef bot. Baby Bot Chef, he's a wonderful. He's got like a little horn thing on the left there. He's ready to just toot his own little chef hat there, let you know your order's ready and fork it up for you there. Also, if you look closely, he's wearing cheetah pants under a chef's apron skirt, which is wonderful. But we're not gonna go with him today. We're gonna go with a big time burger, big, big, big time burger guy. His feet aren't exactly on the floor, that's okay. They will be below the box and his hands are, like this is clearly a cybernetic robot thing, so I'm not gonna judge what his hands should or shouldn't look like. It's a pretty decent render for what we're looking for today and it will look good on the packaging. So now it's time to get it on its own layer. We're just gonna select the magic wand. We're gonna go ahead up here to select subject, choose cloud, and then hit select subject and Photoshop should have no problem grabbing this guy here. And now we have our Funko Pop on its own layer. This is actually what we're gonna bring into 3D in After Effects in just a second, but we got a huge problem. And here's that problem, is that the packaging of a Funko box is first of all, slightly complicated. And second of all, it has a totally different art style, obviously, than what a vinyl or plastic figure looks like. So we need some way to take this AI generated image and make it look like the uh, Funko box art, make it look more cartoony, more illustrated. So there's four different ways I have for you to do that. The first way is just in Photoshop. It's the least impressive way, but you can go to filter, filter gallery, and use the cutout option here and adjust the number of levels and things until you get something that to you feels like it looks a little bit more illustrated. It will work, it's just fine. So the second way you can do this is you can just copy your image out of Photoshop or whatever, paste it on a frame inside of Adobe, animate CC, select that image, go up to modify, choose bitmap, trace bitmap, 
color threshold, the higher that number is, the less colors. Minimum area, the smaller that number is, the more sort of accurate that Adobe Animate tries to be with the colors. I like the old 50-50 here. Then I hit OK. You get an image like that. And that's probably good enough. You can probably take that and use that as your box art. You can do this very same thing, option three in Illustrator using the live trace feature. But we're going to do a totally different way today. And we're going to use AI to generate an AI image, which is pretty meta and we'll use that Stable Diffusion plugin. So here's what we wanna do. First, we wanna resize our canvas so that it is kind of tight with the image. There's not an extra white space because the Stable Diffusion plugin does not give us uh, an unlimited number of resolution outputs. Then we're gonna go to Image, Image Size, and we are going to set the height or the bigger number to 1024, which is Stable Diffusion's max output. And we see that the width at 1024 is 789. We need to remember that number 789. So then when we go to generate on the Stable Diffusion plugin, the height is 1024, and that number was, what was it? I already forgot what it was. I think it was 589 or something like that. Uh, but you're looking for the closest value in here, and you're gonna have to mess around with these so that the top and bottom don't get cut off. Next thing you wanna do is make sure that you have include image selected, and that you have that set to selected layer, and that your uh, AI Funko Pop generated image is on that layer. Here's the important part is that in the prompt, we're not gonna actually put any prompt information. We're only gonna put style information. And that is like flat shading, cell shaded vector, cartoon art, Funko box art, Funko vector art. I just read the prompt there. Um, but we're just putting style information in there. And then we wanna turn that prompt strength up all the way to tell Stable Diffusion to like really look at that a lot. But that prompt is going to both conflict with and complement the image strength. And so it really is a balancing act between how much of the style information you can get thrown in there balanced with not changing the image at all. So an image strength somewhere between 45 and 65 will work. You'll just have to experiment with yours to see what's good. I'm going to start off with 53. We'll turn the steps down to 65 and see what we get. So we've added a couple of words to our prompt here, vector, flat, illustration, things like that. You can also take the steps down quite a bit to try to reduce the refinement of the image to keep it in that kind of cartoony style. That's another thing that is definitely worth trying. The image strength, we're gonna hover right around 54 and we'll hit dream. So I'm gonna call that good enough. Again, if you're having troubles, you're gonna to have to keep making the width wider and wider until you get a full nice render of the figure and keep reducing the steps and playing around with the balance between image strength and prompt strength until you get it just right. We'll go ahead and hit layer. Uh, and then in this plugin, uh, it gives you sort of a smart object. So we're gonna go ahead and rasterize that. So now we have our two images that we need. The, the rest is gonna come from a template file that I made. And it's just the fun of getting to assemble it all together, which I'm gonna show you next. But we wanna just toggle between our box art and our final art, our box art, and then the fun co-pop that's gonna go inside the box. All right, so we're gonna need both of those things. I'm gonna keep them right here on these layers. The next thing you wanna do is head over to camppeculiar.com. You'll get to a page that looks something like this. Look for the resources button. And this is the resource you're looking for, the Funko Pop box template for 2D AI figures. It's free, you just hit the download button and you open it up in Photoshop. And this is what the template looks like. The most important thing about this template is that the artwork for the top part of the box, front, right, left, back and bottom, stay on their own layers. When you open it up, they'll be in folders and there's tons of different things you can adjust in there and customize uh, the way that you like for your particular box. But at the end of the day, we're gonna bring this Photoshop file into After Effects. And so the parts of the box that are labeled need to be on their own layers. Eventually, we're going to delete this layer that has just a general idea of where your uh, box art should go. But first, we need to come up with a name for our character. So we can just select the text tool over here and click on where it says character name. And this guy is called uh, Big Time Burger Head. Barely fits in there, but that, that is his name, so I can't change it. I would just have to make the, the font size smaller is the only option that I would really have there because I can't change his name. It's Big Time. What was it? Big time, big time burger head needs a little bit smaller of fine. Needs a less big time of a font. So we'll put a 52 in there and see if we can do that. And maybe even go negative 50 here to just squeeze it up a little bit. And I think that like, that's just fine for here. Next thing we're gonna do is change the number. This is actually the third one that I've made. So in my series, so I'm gonna put in three, just click on each of the boxes with a number on them. Next thing, very important, are the colors for your box, and those are all on their own layer on the particular panel of the box. So let's go ahead and start with the front. 
we will go ahead and collapse everything that became expanded as we were uh, messing around with the text. And we'll start with the front. So we go down there and we find the red. We double click on that and we decide what color we want. I'm gonna go with a yellow for fast food or like an orangish color. Uh, and then we need to set the left side and the back to also have that same color. And so we will just go to the left side and find the red, double click on that, and then select the darkest color uh, from there and you'll get the right color. Last step for the box is to put the box art on there. So we'll go ahead and grab that. Sorry, baby chef, it didn't, didn't work out this time. We'll go ahead and select our box art and then go back to the box. And we need to put one on the top of the box, which is up here. And we need to put one on the left side of the box, which is over here. We're gonna resize these in a second, don't get scared. And then one on the back of the box, which is over here. And boy, we got more, there are a bunch of these figures on here. We need one on the front of the box as well. So I'll paste one there and he's gonna go right there. And then we need one on the bottom of the box. And so we'll put one there and flip him upside down. Now it's time to go in and start resizing these. They should all stay on their own layer since we pasted them on their own layer. And then we'll just hit Command or Control T to transform them and just get it about uh, what's there is, is the example. And then the last one, the, the main image, the hero shot, uh, we'll go ahead and put him over here, scale him down until he just fits into this shape here. Again, you're kind of ballparking it. Uh, that looks good. I would keep in mind though, that the more that you uh, drift your main box art image out into this panel area, the more it's gonna obscure your actual Funko Pop figure when we bring this into After Effects. So it is better to have it to the left versus the right if you're having to make a choice there. And then when we feel good with that, we can go up to this layer up here that says figure art, delete me and do that part, delete it. All right, now for the fun part, after I've saved this file, we need to flatten all of these different groups, but definitely keep them on their own layer because when we bring them into After Effects, uh, we want After Effects to have them on their own layer so that we can rotate them into position. Really easy to do. Just select the layer and hit Command or Control E and it will flatten the front, the top, the right, the left, the back, and the bottom. And believe it or not, you're done with the template. We'll go ahead and save that. I like to call it a, a new name or save it as a new file name. And I would just, whatever it is, I would put merged or something like that at the end of it. Last thing we need to do, sorry, baby chefs, not, it didn't work out this time. Last thing we need to do is save our actual Funko Pop. We used the box art. Now we just need to save the, the mid journey uh, render of it or like our hero image, the thing that's gonna go inside the box. We're gonna go ahead and export that as a PNG. We're in After Effects and we're gonna go ahead and select new composition, 19 by 20, 30 frames per second, all that's just fine. And the first thing we'll do is just talk briefly about After Effects, definitely not an After Effects tutorial, but a composition is sort of a collection of layers that have keyframes that move things around. And so we have our main one here called Comp 1 and we'll just keep it as that. And so now it's time to build our Funko box. So we're gonna right click in this media area here, this project area and select file. We're gonna select the merged version of the Funko Pop box, the one that had the folders uh, all merged just into one layer. And instead of footage down here, we're gonna change that to composition, retain layer sizes. Uh, we're not gonna hit create composition. Composition, retain layer sizes, merge layer styles into footage is fine. We hit okay. Uh, and two things happened. We got a folder that has all of our different pieces of the box art on it which is great, we could drag that into this timeline and start building it. But we also got a composition that has those already on the timeline. And that's really helpful uh, because we need these all grouped together anyway so that when we rotate them later, we don't like accidentally move parts of the box around. So we're just gonna build the box in whatever your file name was. It will have its own composition. Here's the main composition with nothing. Here's the composition that was created when you brought in the box art. And now we're just gonna build it on that composition. So the only thing you need to remember is that everything needs to be a 3D layer, which you get by turning on these switches here. This little like 3D cube looking thing. Everything in this project needs to be a 3D layer. Uh, and then you can hit uh, Command or Control semicolon to turn off the guides that came in with that Photoshop file. And it's time to build a box. So just pick the part that you want. I'll go ahead and start with the left here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit R to rotate it. If you only see one set of rotation values here, it's because you didn't turn on the 3D layer. And this one is needs to spin on Y, so I'll find the Y rotation and just kind of like joggle it around so I know which way to uh, rotate it. And then I can just type in 90. 
because that's what it needs to be. The reason why it doesn't look like it's oriented to the camera is because we're looking through a th out of, like at a 3D view of it where it goes back in space. The front is beautiful. It can stay where it is, but the top will hit R on that to bring up the rotations, and it needs to spin on X, which is the horizontal axis. So again, I'll just joggle it to see which way it needs to go, and that's the way it needs to go, and then I don't really need to look at it. I just need to type in negative 90. The back is a pretty easy one because it just needs to spin on Y and it needs to spin 180 degrees around so that it is oriented the correct way. Next one we need to do is the right hand side of the box. So we'll hit R on that and it needs to spin on Y. So we'll just sort of like rotate over Y till we get which way it's going and then type in negative 90. Uh, and then the bottom is the last one and the bottom needs to spin on X. So we'll twirl all these back up and we're ready to sort of align our box pieces together, which is really easy, but hard to get exactly perfect. You may need to adjust the scale of some parts like the back. You can select the back, hit S. You might need to adjust the scale to like 100.5. I don't think you'll need to go to 101 or 102, but 100.5 might help you out there. Uh, and then it's just a matter of moving them into place. But moving them into place from a perspective view is not always uh, accurate. So I recommend changing from the active camera to first we'll go with a front view and that will give us an orthographic view. And then we can just select the individual pieces and sort of line them up. So using, uh, making sure you're in custom view one, two, or three, and then using the orbit around the cursor tool, you can take one final look at your box and see that it looks okay. It looks, it looks just fine. Uh, one little problem with it is that you can see the reverse side of the images here on the left in the back and even the floor and the top. And so I do have an insides file you can also download uh, from the website and you can bring that in and pad the backs of the box the same way. You bring the layers in and you just position the back left side uh, and then bring them forward just a little bit so that they hide that background. Now when we orbit the camera in custom view one, two, or three, you can see there's padding on the inside of the box. You could go ahead and finish this off and put it on the top and the bottom. I even have ones for the cutout versions. And the last step, the fun step, the almost done step is to bring in the AI hero render of our shot. So we'll go ahead and click import. We'll select big time burger head here. Just the one file is fine. And then again, we'll just go ahead and put it in the scene. It needs to become a 3D layer. And you can see he is quite big, uh, but we'll put him inside the box, hit S to scale, and we'll scale him down until he fits inside the box in a reasonable way. But from there, it looks pretty good. And we can go back to our main scene now, comp one, which has nothing on it. It's just a timeline with nothing on it. Last step, very important step. When you go to comp one and you have nothing on the timeline and you bring your box that you just built with your character inside of it, you definitely need to make it a 3D object and you definitely need to hit this asterisk over here uh, to collapse the transformations. When you collapse the transformations and make this a 3D object in your main composition, that allows you to spin it uh, around and, and have 3D layers retained composition to composition. Another fun thing that you'll need to do maybe is move that anchor point, which is having it rotate on the right edge there. So we're gonna move the anchor point more to the middle. So there you go, a free Funko box template for making your own AI generated Funko pops. Make yourself a collection, put them on a shelf. Let me know what you came up with. If you enjoyed this sort of thing, you wanna see more After Effects tutorials on either building collectibles or making animated comics, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you and I will see you next time.